Shut up and sit down. I just feel like we're going to quote unquote come out of it or whatever, you know, however long that takes. And I don't think that much shit is actually going to change. Right. I think you're right. And that's like, that's like, that's like what worries me is I just feel like, okay, we had this event and it was a big deal and people reacted differently and there were like hot takes all over the place. And, uh, uh, you know, there's like a lot of economy versus health and all this Trump shit and China shit and blah, blah, blah. And everybody was like, oh, man, power of human connection, power of empathy, blah, 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 blah. And then it's like, I feel like at some point in... I don't fucking know, early 2021 or whatever, we're going to get a, like a full reopening and people are going to be like, oh, uh, yeah, I just do the same shit that I've always done. <laughs> or I like, I go to my office that I shouldn't be going to because we saw what happens with people in fucking close quarters or I just hang out with my same three girlfriends or whatever. Right. And I just, I don't think a lot of shit's going to change that much. I think a lot of it is invented by like the thought leadership class who needs stuff to write about right? <laughs> or talk about. Um, right. So that's like, I don't know. That's my concern slash depression about it. You know? Um, I'm totally with you on that. The, um, as you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. I restarted my empowerment coaching company. Right. And um, anyway, as you know, I restarted my empowerment company. <laughs> right. And um. Sorry, my roommate's making noise. <laughs> yeah, it, has, it happens, man. I've lived uh, in anyway, but I get I get so many people that are like, so, like you're unable to walk your talk or whatever. And what they don't understand is that I am walking my talk. Like, right. They, I think they think a coach is when you say coach, especially uh-huh. an empowerment coach. People think people like Tony Robbins or right. Gary V of all people, bad guy. Right. <laughs> and don't take me wrong. I am still on a social media team, but holy crap, he's just getting more and more as time goes by. A little bit more like Tony, actually, just more and more vicious at people. Right. Which is not helpful, but now is the time to be teaching people how how to be empathic yes ideally and like i actually i think i did this in 2015 i think there's a there is like science and research you know i don't know if we believe any of that anymore but there is science and research that you can teach empathy to adults right which is not for a long time we thought that wasn't possible and i feel like if anything, we should be doubling down on that shit right now. Because look, this kind of goes into like what we were going to talk about. But um, I just feel like right now, one of the things is there is more value to most people in like being able to go on Facebook or Twitter or even like an email thread, a Slack thread, whatever, And say to people, like, you're wrong about this. Like, it was all China or it was all Trump or it was all whoever. And, like, there's more value to people in the moral superiority than there is in an actual discussion, right? And 
when the moral superiority is more important than the discussion, it feels like the balance is screwed up. Right. That's exactly right. And I think that has a lot to do with like people like you and me, like we grew up with narcissistic families. Like we have been going through trauma right. our entire lives. We are used to this. This is nothing for us. Like, okay, we have to stay home and like women are contacts. Like that's a defense mechanism. Right. We know how to do that. I think right. a large portion and as extroverted as we both are, there's still an amount of having to pause and retreat. Right. But I think that I'm with you on that. I, but I think that these people in leadership positions, I hate to use that word because you, we, we feel the same way. Leadership and management are not the same. But in these leadership roles, they're mostly managers. They're not leaders. Right. I agree completely. And um, they just, they're lashing out. Uh-huh. Yeah. They're talking a good game about teamwork and, and keeping stuff together and then and then when they can't, right, because they can't be at everybody's house that wants to monitor them or whatever. Right. Right. Now they're just pissed off and they're lashing out and that's the real leaders are kind of coming out of the woodwork. So I think to some degree now is the time for that to happen, for the actual leaders to emerge. And we're gonna see an awful lot of a awful lot more of what you're touching on with right. people right. just not knowing how to deal with the trauma of this kind of situation and lashing out and hurting, hurting themselves. Right. right. Cause ultimately so that's really what that is. I saw some stuff. Yeah. Like to your point, I saw some stuff about a week ago about how, and this is completely logical, but there's a rise in conspiracy theory stuff during times of crisis. Right. And you're seeing it now with like, Okay, there's a lot of negative stuff you could say about Bill Gates, no question. But broadly, I think he's a respected figure. I think people think maybe he's an asshole or does weird stuff, no doubt. But I think broadly, you wouldn't associate him with like negative storylines overtly, right. right? And now you got all this stuff where like he's a pedophile, he created this virus, right? And you look at like, times of crisis i just feel like people need stuff that resonates with their brain and they also need to feel like they're getting one over on other people right like you're stupid because you believe this and i'm woke and smart because i believe this thing over here right yep. and i just feel like it's an interesting time because you have this like logical call for unity or discussion around community and blah 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 we're all in it together but then it's like that's not the execution level of a lot of this stuff you know right yeah that's, that's, i absolutely am agreeing with you and and even like to that point like just on your wall you know that i show up there just to light a few people up <laughs> like, right and no and doubt it's, man i it's, wish it's, it's, it's uh, it's not one. very life coachy of me, but to the bigger point, these people that are on your wall and mine on occasion yeah. are all talk and they, they're like, they want to be free of consequence and they want to act like they're moral, morally superior and yep. virtue signal like crazy. And then when you catch them in it, then they're reduced to nothing, which is not the point of my of my lighting people up, it's that you don't get to, you don't get to tell other people how to be if you're not going to be right. that way. Right. It's not even that. I mean, like, I don't even know if it's about walking, walk, talking to, I just think you're probably, you're not really like allowed to tell other people how to be in general, like screw it, right. man. Like let people live their own life. So right. this is like what I was going to ask or say too, right? If you read anything about like addiction, like drug, alcohol, whatever, um, I honestly feel like symptom wise or indicator wise, there are a lot of people that are addicted to moral superiority or just trying to like crush people in political discussion, right? I think it's a legitimate addiction. Like, is it on par with like opioids? Maybe not, but it's like, I think it rewires your brain to feel like 
you convince some idiot of like why Trump is good or evil or why China did it or whatever. I don't think we talk about that shit, but it's like, I think that it's a legit addiction for people, you know? It is. And actually there's science to back up what you're saying. It's a dopamine response. Right. And it makes somebody feel good. We're hardwired for negativity bias. That we know. Right? Just because right. at some point fight or flight was useful. <laughs> <laughs> right. And now for like we're thousands in constant, of years. Yeah. Right. But now with crap like this that keeps on happening, we are again, people like you and me have been fight in fight or flight our entire lives because right. of the environments we grew up in. But now these people don't know how to deal with their fight or flight and they can't see it because you can't see the forest when you're in it. Right. Right. Very true. Um, and there is science to back up what you're saying. There absolutely is. Right. It's a dopamine response and they get high off of, for whatever reason, crushing other people. Have you ever heard of that so term wrong. like? Have you ever turned to that, heard of that term? Like I saw it in a New York Times article, which is pretty like woke, I'm sure. But have you ever heard of like rage quits, right? Like if you force somebody to quit a platform, a community, a forum, because they're so pissed at having to deal with you, right? And there are people that like get hard off of that stuff, right? Like they want to collect rage quits and shit on Reddit or Twitter or Facebook or wherever, right? And it's like, man, I just wonder, like, how does a person's life get to a point where they want to inspire that? Now, like, I'll be the first to admit, like, I go online and throw grenades and shit around to see how people will react, no question. But I, don't, I never want somebody to, like, get angry enough where they like want to like where they get enraged to the point where they want to quit being a part of a community right like i like seeing how people respond and react to shit no question but it's just like it's so weird to me that there's like a subset of culture where people are like man i want to like beat the other side at arguing stuff that like a lot of times in a vacuum, like both sides are like not even accurate, you know, like both people are quoting shit that's irrelevant. So it's just very weird that like, I guess it's not weird in the sense of science backs the whole thing up, but it's like interesting to observe every day that that happens, you know? It's, it's so, it's crazy to me that, especially if you understand the science or just, you don't even have to understand the science, just observe. If you've got the power of observation, you can see all of that happening. Right. Um, and in my training, and this is why it kind of lights me up to go in there and talk to people like, you know who, and you know who, and be like, right, right. Because they don't comment on the men's responses. Right. No. They come no. after the women on your feed. Right. And then I go in there and I'm like, <laughs> because that's the whole point of it, because they feel like bigger men for lighting up somebody yeah. that's smarter than them just with some sort of insult. Like, who the hell? Like, how are you married? How are you married? Right. Someone slept with but, you. Okay, but see, that's, okay, that's the thing, too. And I've talked about this and people hate it because it cuts way too close to reality, right? But some of the reason why people, especially men, do stuff like that is because their other avenues of potential fulfillment are not there, right? So whether that's like relationally, honestly, like sexually, work-wise, whatever, when that stuff is not there, then they fill that gap with something. And like, it could be fishing, it could be drinking, it could be smoking, it could be like taking people down online, right? And sometimes the easiest of those is taking people down online. And especially right now when like some public stuff is not even available to people, right? You know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Well, I mean, getting your dopamine is getting your dopamine. That's the end yeah. of it. That's what an addiction is, right? 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, essentially, that's all it is, you know. And this is all fear-based, which is what addictions are. They're fear-based. They're fear of lack or irrelevance. They're low self-esteem triggered. They're shame triggered. Right. Um, and it is so hard to quiet that din long enough to explain to somebody, hey, look, I know you're afraid. I know this is scary, but that's not the way to act. <laughs> Especially yeah. since the more you're in fight or flight, the more your amygdala gets rewired, it literally does, gets rewired right. to always be on so that you're always in fight or flight. And so then you don't know how to stop. Right. Right. So do you think like, okay, some people are just lost causes and maybe that's like an evolution has to weed people out type deal, right? Do you think that people, that there is a degree where people are capable of having like actual two-way, two-sided discussions online? Or do you think the online kind of forum and modality will never really lend itself to that? I think the online um, hampers it. Right. I would agree with that. I would even say in person, it's like in person, there are people you just fight with and you're like, this person is a freaking idiot or like some type of donkey creature. Right. But it's a, like a little bit easier because you can like at least read facial cues and like kind of see like what they're processing and what they're not. Whereas like goddamn comment box is very different than that obviously you know yep yeah um so like okay here's like the more personal side of it i try to personally when i feel like it's a personal attack or whatever um which happens sometimes uh, maybe that i'm a bigger dude in profile photos i don't get it as much but i get it a decent amount um, I try not to take it personally. I'm not always successful with that. You and I have talked about this a couple of times. I do feel like it makes, um, if I realize the person's kind of like an idiot or they're not even using facts or they're using inherently biased sources or whatever, like then I don't kind of don't uh, care as much, but there are some situations where it can make you feel like real small or kind of like even though you're like doing a good thing by like participating in dialogue or initiating dialogue um you know i just feel like i don't know it can make you feel kind of like small and detached or whatever even though it's maybe somebody you don't value the relationship of so like what what's some of your takes on like those moments uh, or like how you react to that. I lose my shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've seen me. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. And there's a specific set of three men, three privileged white guys I'm thinking of on your right. wall. Right. That without fail show up to shit all over you. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Doesn't matter which post. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure, man. And it's like, and I think point, of, like, it's tedious and it's trite and I'm over it. And like, that's what you've got. Move on. Like, that's a tired game. Right. Try something different. Like, at this point, I'm kind of there with everybody. Although you see me lose my shit when I'm having a particularly hard day, which today might turn out to be and I'm probably staying off Facebook. Right. Um, it's, probably for the, it's probably safer, you know. Uh, I I have this tendency to just kind of unleash and um dog walk a few people right which really isn't very empathetic or life coachy of me i get that right. <laughs> at the same time right i'm a human and when you say things specifically to hurt me okay i'll give you an incident so i restarted my life coaching business mm -hmm. and my friend's wife um i had been doing some side graphics work for her and she's like, oh, hey, do you have any collateral for your new business? And I sent her all my collateral, you know, which includes prices. That's what collateral does, right? And she's like, do you, 
think you should offer a discount? And I went, no, I do not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't. I have two programs. They cost two separate things. Uh -huh. You're my friend. Don't ask for a discount is basically right. what I told her. All right. Um, we ended up, we're long story short, no longer friends. Her husband lit me up the next morning about how I need to, needed to apologize to his wife for her attacking me about, I'm not good enough for that kind of money. Right. And I just, yeah, this all seems like a lot of BS. <laughs> But it is, first of all, but here's where the pain came from. And this is why it hurts so bad. And this is, and this is, yeah. I had to, I had to, I had to sit there for, it took me weeks to figure it out. The pain wasn't that she devalued my service or mm -hmm. cut me down or made mm -hmm. me feel small. The pain was she didn't bother to get to know me in a hole before telling me I wasn't valuable enough for her yeah. and her friends. Okay, so this, um, first of all, like, obviously, I'm sorry that you had to deal with that, right? I mean, I've been there many times, too. So, like, this goes to kind of like a work thing, too, um, a life thing, but a work thing as well. It's like, um, you know, there's this little concept of, like, absentee managers or like managers that don't really check in with you. You never know where they're at. Well, it's like some people call them country club management, whatever. So I kind of feel the same way in that vein, like professionally, right? Personally it can hurt more, but like you look at right now with layoffs and stuff. And obviously a lot of layoffs are like hospitality retail, right? But it's starting in white collar and it might get worse through the summer. Like, on a white-collar layoff, if you have a boss that's, like, completely detached and doesn't really talk to you, doesn't give a shit about you, doesn't make any effort to kind of learn who you are as a person, then it's, like, it should – okay, paradoxically, it should hurt less because you should be thinking, like, well, this idiot never really got the chance to – got gave the opportunity to know me, right? But in reality, it hurts more to get laid off in those situations because you're like, man, you didn't even attempt to invest in me before, like, jettisoning me, right? And you see that in personal relationships, too, but, like, the work one is probably even more common because it's like people hit revenue downturns or, you know, whatever other reason. That's probably the most common. And it's like, Oh, I don't really know Todd that well. Like, I'll just get rid of him, right? And it's like, well, like, part of the reason you have a higher salary is because this guy's underneath you. Like, you having direct reports allows for this higher salary, right? So you kind of need to invest in them as a person. And I think, like, broadly, I don't want to paint – like a doom and gloom picture of society. But I do think broadly we dismiss people out of hand without getting to know what their talents or gifts could be because of like one or two points of contact we have with them. Right. Right. And yep. if you believe in God even, right. And like, that's a separate topic for later, but like <laughs> if you believe in God, like, or any faith type model, you have to think like nobody is put here randomly necessarily. Like even like Ted Bundy or the worst people you can think of had some form of like gift or whatever, right? Yep. So if nobody is put here completely randomly, right? Now, some people lead like basic lives. I don't think I'm like some major success, but I think that there's a reason all of us are put here, then like when we interact with other people, whether it's personal or professional, shouldn't we get to know what their reason or story or whatever is, as opposed to just like dismissing them off of one or two things like that feels right to me, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. We make other people. Here's the thing. 
we make other people our business in the wrong ways. Yes. Right. So one of the key things that she said to me was, my friends won't afford you. But how do you know that? Right. Like, why are you in their pocketbooks? Right. How do you know that? Yeah. Like, are you running it's like not your Google? business and I guarantee are you don't you running, know that's true. Right. Are you running Google level data on these people, you know? Right. And so we're, we're, we're protective of and connected to people in the wrong ways. And we get, we, we get a lot of messaging about um, lift yourself up and make yourself happy and, and, and feed yes. yourself esteem and do what you want to yeah. do. And yes. relationships are hard freaking work, man. No, uh, no shit, man. And it's like, you can't, I don't, I mean, this, this has like a political um, overtone too. Right. But like, you can't, you kind of just like can't tell somebody like get happier or hustle more, pull yourself up. Like there are, there are ways to have that discussion. Yeah. And I know there's an entrepreneurial class that has found success around it. Right. Um, yes. So I get it, but it's like, relationships are hard work is hard defining yourself is hard branding stuff is hard nobody falls out of bed and gets all this shit right okay most people bang their head against the wall a lot of fucking times before this works out if it even works out right so i kind of have that problem with the narrative of like you see this politically you see it in a fox news crowd a lot where someone will be like hey Maybe we could forgive X amount of debt. And they're like, accountability, personal accountability. But And it's like, I get it. But it's also like, if you own a company and everybody in your geo has debt, okay, it makes them less likely to buy shit from you. Now, I'm not saying we can forgive all debt. I don't think that's wise either. But, like, we just, like, throw these, like, one touch solutions at people like hustle more or like get happier or like go like work out and everything will be fine or whatever. And it's like, that's not it's like life is way more multifaceted than that. You know? Yep. That's yeah. absolutely it. And that's what people aren't people get fixated on. So like what works for me is not going to be what works for you. Right. After we get done filming, I'm going to shut it down because I have a lot of animating to do this afternoon. So I'm going to shut it down and uh -huh. do 20 minutes of yoga and eat right. some lunch, take a walk and come back right. to it. Yep. That works sure. for me. Yep. Yep. But that's not going to be your process. No, it's not everybody's, man. And like, I think to that point, there's too many people out there right now in my mind that are like learning from the... 20th year people where all they know is like fucking hustle work scale commitment branding instagram walk and talk videos blah 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 right that is it works for some people and it works very successfully for some people okay most people if they just did three hours of some project thing they need to take a break whether that's like a television or a pet or a like texting or calling a friend or whatever like most people cannot be on for 17 hours a day but because that's the like the success narrative that we've largely been given people feel like oh i should aspire to that but it's like it doesn't work for the majority of people so here's the thing, and we've touched on this. We touch on a lot of these things so much. Um, everybody's got their place and their strengths, right? Like super huge thing for me, I just hired a super part-time admin. Like she literally works two or four hours for me a week. Right. But that's two or four hours of stuff that I am not emotionally connected to that I can come back to, right? Because if I work on that stuff, my business fails because then it takes me eight or 16 or 24 hours to do the same amount of work because right. 
I'm bored or it's below my skill set or I'm farting around or um, I'm way too perfect about it. And so we need to we need to be able to in the same way we've discussed this a lot. We need to take people that way. Like, what are your strengths? Let's put you there. I've been an uh, executive. I was an executive admin for 15 years. I get it. I know how to do the work. That's not the problem. The problem is that's not where my skill set is best used. And that's the same for so many people. And we're taught that we have to have one career path, one life path. Right. And that's just not the way the world works. It's not. There are right. some people that can go and be engineers or doctors or teachers for their entire lives. And that yep. is fine. Yeah. People are not wired that way. And there needs to be room for that as well. And bootstrapping is not a way for them to thrive. Right. Right. I agree with that too. I mean, there's a, about four or five years ago, there was research. I think it is um, university of Washington. Uh, where they basically said the optimal work to break ratio for most people is 52 minutes on, 17 minutes off, right? And you ever post shit like that on LinkedIn, which I have, people will scoff at you and be like, oh, you got to be grinding all the time. How else are you going to be successful? How else are you going to get scale how so you're gonna define a personal brand or whatever right okay i'm not super successful in like a conventional metric sense but i make money i can afford things right and i've never worked fucking 17 hours straight through right so again i i'm not jeff bezos i'm not anywhere close to that but it's like i i just don't think you have to um uh, I don't think I don't think that narrative makes sense, right? And it this goes back to the whole thing we were talking about at the beginning with like moral superiority, where I feel like the idea that I work seventeen hours and you don't allows me to claim moral superiority or virtuous superiority over you, when in fact it's just two different styles, you know. Right. And here's the thing. Nobody is wired to work that long. I don't care who the hell you are. You are not wired to work that much time in a day. Right. Maybe once in a while, like if you've right. got a launch or an event coming up, okay. But the reality is that 17 hours is not viable, not consistently. Right. And you're burnout and you're up, you know, you're upside down and you can't, you know, and you just, but the answer is then they work harder. Well, that's not the answer. It's not. Right. I can't tell you how many times I've been neck deep in overwhelm. And I, the answer literally is to stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that is, that's honestly the only answer, man. It's the mm -hmm. same shit where like, if you go through, okay, like we were talking about this 10 minutes ago. If you get in a rabbit hole on, Facebook or whatever with somebody, right? Then like the only way to do it is to get out of it. Just go somewhere else, log off, right? Um, so sometimes you just have to take yourself out of those situations. Like that's all there is to it, right? And it goes with work too. The science thing, um, the science thing on that side is, I think, 54 hours a week, which is still a lot. If you work five days conventionally, that's still over 10 hours a day. It's still a lot of work. I think 54 hours a week is considered a hard ceiling on productivity. Okay. So. I, and, I, and I would lean toward erring on the side of Tim Ferriss versus erring on the side of that research. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> For sure. We as humans. So here's what here's what I've had to do in the past. This cancer has knocked me flat, and I've had to get my executive function back, and I've had to recognize when I do my best work and when I'm the most productive. So I get up at like 5:45 in the morning, and I take my pills and I do some yoga and go uh -huh. through my whole little morning routine, and then I do my first things first first because in the afternoon my brain is crap. Right. Right. It's not going to comprehend what needs to be done. 
it gets stuck in spin. I get easily distracted, which is why I hired an admin, because I can't afford to do that. I need to be working on, I still need to be able to work. Or because I know my brain is crappy at two o'clock from two to five, right. I just need to stop and go do something right. else. Yep. Right? Since there is this four hour, four hour work week, he just doesn't call it work, but he has a very similar schedule. And yep. he, I don't want to say he's got the freedom to do it. I mean, he, he worked pretty hard to get that freedom though. And he started yep. hiring people the instant he could hire people because that would make him more productive and bring him more money. And there's a whole cycle that really you and I should sit down and write like this whole curriculum to teach people how to be a real entrepreneur like that. Like right. the successful direct salespeople are successful because they've hired housekeepers and admins so they can focus on their work. Yeah, man. I have a uh, Gary V is successful because he hires a staff. Tim Ferriss right. is successful because he's got a staff. Yeah. Richard it's part Branson. of it for sure. It's a big part of it. And it's like, you should not be the curse of most managers in my opinion and most entrepreneurs even is you should not be deep in the fucking weeds about like the day to day of what you do. And the hardest part for a lot of people is, okay, well, if I'm not deep in the weeds about it, it won't be done the exact way I want. So you have to give that up, no question. Okay, that's hard, but you have to do that. But then I agree, it's like delegation plus staff, man. Because if you're the name that people associate with something, whether that's like a coaching business or a fucking podcast or a speaking thing or whatever, like you should only be at a relationship like a building and developing relationship and opportunity level. The task elements that go into that should be handled by someone else, right? Maybe not in the beginning because you don't have the capital to do that. But like, yeah, I agree with you. Like delegation, I read a study once. It was based on lawyers. So it's like a little bit specific, but it was like lawyers that are good at delegation become partners faster which is logical. They make more money over the first 20 years of a career, which is logical. Like law is like all the time about like details and contracts and shit like that. You should not be in those if you want to be at a money level, right? right. You should prove your aptitude and worth in those so that people are cool with you advancing and having greater financial like uh, earnings and responsibility or whatever but like you should that should not be what drives you you know right yeah. well here's the thing and 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 we've talked about this too we have so many more shows we need to do <laughs> we've talked about people's um, yeah. shitty relationship with money like